Are we certain there is no room for us to stay in Tian's Landing? Do we really need to camp outside? The ground is soft enough for a warrior. Walls just get in the way when a fighting starts. Besides, I've yet to find a bed that fits me. Not everyone has a hide as thick as yours. I know. I don't want to impose on anyone. Haha! <laughs> if you change your mind, let me know. Few people can impose on people as well as I can. Something's on your mind? When you say the word, we're ready to leave. I'm looking forward to seeing the Imperial City again. I appreciated the hectic pace when I was there. When we reach the Imperial City, we'll have a whole host of new problems. You have to love a challenge. I only spent enough time in Tien's Landing to learn the location of Gao the Greater's stronghold. It's a nice enough place, though they're still adjusting to the flooding of the old town some years ago. Always happy to help. That's it! You have everything you need. Just let me know when you want to go and we'll set the marvelous dragonfly to flight. My beautiful dragonfly will finally get a real test. Let's hope those modifications hold up. Have you seen anyone matching the description? The Lotus Assassins are getting impatient. They were very vague and wouldn't answer my questions. Are they even sure of who they are looking for? Does it matter? Death Sand himself seeks this one. Do you need any more incentive than that? Just question everyone. This person apparently caused a lot of damage in the South. Here, what about this one? At least it's a man, like they said. You, identify yourself. By order of the Emperor and the Lotus Assassins, state your name and purpose for being in the Imperial City. We are questioning everyone who has arrived in the city recently. You bear a resemblance to someone we are looking for. I don't know. He is tattooed in a similar way. The clothes could be the same. It's not enough to be sure. 
Hmm. We could hold him anyway. It's not a good match, but the Lotus Assassins would leave us be for a few days while they question him. Is there a problem here, Captain? Well, is there? No, Princess Leanne. We were questioning this traveler by order of the Lotus Assassins. There is no need to pursue this questioning any further. You may go. My apologies, Princess, but I was ordered to detain anyone even vaguely matching. Captain, this man is here on a personal matter of mine that does not concern you. Do I make myself clear? Y yes, Princess Leanne. Then unless you wish to be transferred to the Wall, you will leave and continue your search. Well, we meet again. I've watched your progress. It seems I underestimated you in Tian's Landing. I have no doubt that you will make as much of an impact on the Imperial City. I understand. Our last meeting was under... interesting circumstances. You may address me as Princess Leanne, the Heavenly Lily. It is, as you can see, customary to bow in my presence. Your explanation lies in the simple bow you have given. Everyone around me kowtows low, obeying my whims. Honest opinion is rare. That is why I often travel without official escort, and occasionally present myself as someone less bridled by the rules of the court. You understand why I don't go into detail here in the street, don't you? With what I have to tell you, I don't want to lose that option of disguise. That would be best. I trust the servants I keep, but this is best discussed away from the open street. I will not speak the location aloud. Take this note. We will meet nearby. But I must have a moment to acquire more fitting attire. That is quite enough. We will continue this at a later time. We both have questions that we will need answered. I'm certain that my entourage would prefer that this take place in private. Your gruff nature is a bit too much for them. I'm sure they are heartfelt. Get up, you lot. I'll be embarrassed for myself, thank you. Save your false modesty for my father's court. Don't be too long. My message concerns your master, and time is very important. It would not have been proper for her to award it to you herself, but Princess Sun Lian requests that you accept this gift. She looks forward to your next meeting. What a wondrous flyer you have. You don't see any of that design about the city. Since they became more common among the nobles, flyers have been fascinating to me. Allow me to officially welcome you to the Imperial City. I am Bai, the Outcrier, and I am here to direct you around our illustrious capital if you have any questions at all.
It would be an honor to say that I aided someone who was greeted by Princess Sun Lian herself. There are several districts within easy walking distance. This area is the market district and it is filled with all sorts of merchants and traffic. If you cross the waterway and turn left, you will soon come to the Gate of the Golden Way, a rich and luxurious place. The Golden Way is connected to both the Scholar's Garden at its far end and the Necropolis, though no one would venture into those burial grounds without good reason. Just over there is the Imperial Arena, where you can test your skills in the finest competition in the land, or grab a drink at the heart of the Empire Tavern within. Out by the waterway you can find the city gates and all manner of merchants hawking their wares. There's also a path off the market district that leads up to the Black Leopard School, home to an ancient order that studies the ways of combat. The Scholar's Garden is a wonder to behold. It is decorated with rocks taken from the Valley of Sprightly Stones. The finest minds in the Empire congregate in the garden. If you have a taste for history, the Necropolis is accessible from the Golden Way as well. A city of the dead, the Necropolis is filled with tombs of rich and poor alike. If you were wise, you would not look for the Lotus Assassins. They keep their secrets close and even spreading rumors can catch their attention. How many travelers wander too close to their lair from simple ignorance, I wonder. There are rumors of a secret entrance into a fortress the Lotus Assassins call their own. The entrance may be in the Necropolis, which is off the Golden Way. If you're smart, you'll go no closer to that place than this question. Was there something else you wanted to discuss? There's almost always something happening in the city. There's Captain Sen, of course, standing guard at the gates out of the city. Word has it the captain has some bounties. Rich rewards for those who can track down some wanted criminal. You must know about the Imperial Arena. Kui, the promoter, is always looking for skilled fighters to participate in his matches. It's this huge building right here. There's word from the Scholar's Garden that some strange outlander has taken up residence there, causing quite the ruckus, as barbarians typically do. There's a rumor floating around that the Black Leopard School has been having some difficulties recently. Feuding masters, that sort of thing. The Black Leopard School lies across the waterway and up the grassy path, if you're curious. Word has it there's going to be a new play happening sometime soon in the Golden Way District, over at the large pagoda on the left side of the road. It might not be ready to start yet, but it's certainly worth keeping an eye out for. That's all I can think of right now. I know many people in the city, but it is impossible to know everyone. Who do you seek? Speak with... Are you mad? No one simply speaks with death's hand. He is the commander of the Imperial Army and the Emperor's most trusted servant. No, you do not speak with death's hand. And even presuming that you are worthy of that honor is considered treason. I know you're new to the Imperial City, but the Lotus Assassins are everywhere. They do not tolerate treason or sedition, and casual questions can be viewed as such. A pleasure to be of service. Enjoy your stay here. Always... I... Oh... I would be happy to, if you... I know you're new to the Imperial City, but the Lotus...
The Imperial City. I'd always heard how impressive it was. The stories didn't do it justice. This is all so much to absorb. I would appreciate your counsel if you have time to speak privately. I don't mean to distract you. I just wanted someone familiar around me for a moment, if only to reassure me that we are still in the Empire I thought I knew. I have long dreamed of reaching the Imperial City, but now that I have, under these circumstances, I am more overwhelmed than ever. But that's what is bothering me. We can't be a long way from home because our home is gone. I can no longer say that what I see is strange or foreign because I have lost what I would have compared it to. I am the one out of place now. I suppose that is a reflex of mine. I cannot be excluded if I don't belong to begin with. That is why I did not participate much while at the school. As a child, I was marked by ill omens, apparently named for them. The people in Two Rivers were polite, but many did not hide the discomfort I caused them. I was watched, studied. If someone's ox died within a season of me bumping my head, it was somehow my fault, and I was treated like a pariah. How do you deal with being able to sense the spirit world when people make such absurd conclusions? I... I cannot change who I am, I know. Perhaps I just have to let all of that go. It will not be easy. But I do feel that you have given me a strength I did not have before. I very much appreciate your support. We should continue this discussion later. I have much to think about, and our work here has only just begun. The Imperial City. I never dreamed I would reach it. We just have to keep going. That's all we can do. I've only been here as long as you have. I doubt I have any information you find useful. I will be more used to you here than traipsing about away. Ah, excellent. I have many items just waiting for you. Time to bloody my axes. Let's keep things simple. If someone gets in our way, remove them. I trust your plans go well, despite the dangers you face and inflict. Is there something I can do for you? They are as powerful as fear allows them to be. Not the specific information you were looking for, I'm sure, but you did ask about my feelings. If their tactics have not changed, everyone fears them as children fear the shadows, never knowing what might come. They are not outlaws. Their orders come from Death's hand and he is the will of the Emperor. At least, that is how it was meant to be. 
Pardon my outburst. Every act of the Assassins has the approval of the Emperor. We were supposed to reflect his glory. That is why some actions should never have been ordered. The Lotus Assassins were once the Order of the Lotus under Prince Ken, spiritual advisor to the Emperor. During and after the attack on Dirge, changes were made. As flames seared the sky, enemies of the Emperor faced a new threat, Death's Hand. He assumed command of our order, and we began silencing people. Some were killed only to serve as warnings. Others... Others had done nothing except be near his enemies. I am no stranger to death. That alone is not enough to disturb me. But I see only weakness in targeting innocence, peripheral to the real enemy. Weakness suggests losing the right to rule. Can you see how that shook my faith in the Empire? You seem to see why I had concerns. Perhaps you might understand. I have not said everything, and I have not yet decided if I will. But I see something in you that may set things right. We will see. For now, what else do you need? I think it's unwise to trust the Emperor's daughter. She acts without regard for her station, but she is a slave to it like we all are. What other truths might she have missed? She may have good information for you, but I suspect she has her own agenda. Be careful. Goodbye. My blades are yours to command. Always happy to help. What do you need? I haven't been to the Imperial City in a while. I traveled here some time ago in my hunt for Gao. In fact, this is where the hunt began. I've come full circle, and I think it's time to let go of the past and look forward. We have exciting things ahead of us. There won't be much time for that sort of diversion, but I can't help see the potential. In my heart, I know my daughter rests as easily as any spirit now. Whatever happens, I have that. And if we succeed, I know she finds peace. If I could go back, I don't know if I would. I'm a different man now, and while I treasure the past, I look forward to the future with the same warmth. We'll find a way through any troubles. We're too resourceful to roll over and die. I'm excited to be back in the city. It feels like we're one step closer to our goal, but you know that better than anyone. You brought us to this point after all. Who else could have gathered this crew or found such a quick way out of Tien's landing? How do you manage that kind of humility? Some sort of special training? It's good to see you still have a sense of humor. Some people mistake dry and boring for humble, and that's simply no fun. Given what we face, we need all the laughter we can get. Regardless, we have an empire to shake up.
Let's go see how much trouble we can cause. I don't know about you, but if a member of the Imperial family were leaving me gifts, I'd be mighty curious to learn more. Then again, the Scholar's Garden is full of more hot air than some flyers, so I can understand your reluctance to rush there. Of course, I'll be here if you need anything. I'm looking forward to killing something, anything. What? What do you want? Too much talking and thinking can be dangerous, I should know. I remember one cold winter I took a job clearing rats from a local monastery. I was supposed to make sure the pests stayed out of the sacred pools, but hunting rats one at a time is boring work. So I had an idea, a way to catch them all at once. I convinced the monks to give me some of their sacred wine, and I filled the sacred pools. I figured if I could get the rats drunk, they'd be so much easier to catch. Nothing happened at first, so I helped myself to the wine. I passed out before the rats came. In the middle of the night, I was woken up by screaming monks and fiery explosions. It was just the rats. The poor furry buggers were just trying to get warm near the monks' fires after their swim in the wine. Not a good combination. The monks wanted me gone. I might have deserved the blame, but the abbot insisted it was a sign from the gods and closed the monastery. See what happens when you think too much? Whatever. What? Well, the city has everything you could ever want. Fighting, money, wine, and... and something else that people like, but I can't quite remember what it is. Oh, well. I'm sure it'll come to me once I've had a few bowls of wine. Let's get something to wet our tongue. Women! That's the one I forgot. <laughs> I must be getting sober if I'm forgetting that one. Whatever. I just hope we don't bump into my suspicious spouse. I can't believe my luck. I arrived home after being lost, only to find that my wife has gone off to visit relatives. I am very happy indeed. Instead of dying upon my return home, I am free. Until she returns, of course.
You're beginning to sound like my wife. Where were you last night? Why were you talking to that woman? Why do you smell like a goat? Always with the questions. As I mentioned earlier, after becoming tournament champion for the second time, I was forced to marry my sponsor's nubile niece. She is the reason I no longer fight. My disapproving dove did not care for my drinking, or for my friends, or my fighting, or my friends fighting. She believed I should settle down, be more respectable. At first I ignored her rebukes and continued fighting, but I soon learned that she was not a woman to be crossed. Prior to one fight, my duplicitous daisy drugged my wine. I don't remember much of what happened next, which is fortunate. From what I hear, it wasn't very pretty. I spent the next several months under the tender ministrations of my doting wife. Needless to say, when I was well enough to walk again, I was more than happy to settle down. As to why I became a bondmaster, well, it's a hard, thankless job that keeps me very, very busy. Very busy. We made it this far. How hard can it be from here? From what I've seen, you're more than capable of handling anything we're likely to encounter. Were you drunk when I told you last time? Ah, if you wish to use Drunken Master, bring me with you. I will throw you bottles of wine which you must pick up. The effect of the wine wears off, but I will keep a continuous supply of wine flowing as long as you keep the enemies away from me. Good, good. I'll be here, struggling to keep up with you if you should need anything. This will be fucking awesome. There is something here. Some evil thing has happened here. It beats on my mind and the Guardian. I can't hold it back. since we inhabited this body. But this place is different. The evil around me has given me strength, for now at least, and has opened potential doors. I don't claim to goodness, mortal. I hate your kind. But we can work together. If you help me, I shall help you. And I'll be much more valuable than the Guardian. Bah! Who cares about her? She's just another insect. This is about what I can offer you when the time comes. What? No! Chaika! You won't make me go! No! I'm sorry. We were fighting again. I'll be all right. Soon. Just, just give me time and I'll be all right. What do you want? They don't come out very much. The Guardian protects me and keeps the other inside. 
When the other tries to get out, it feels like my head is going to tear itself apart. Yes, but the Guardian has always been with me, and I trust him. The other one has been there too, but smaller. They won't say why. They say we have to be with you now. Ukiki <laughs> Ha! You care too much for this whelp. Ukir okir mo kut tithir sunuk. Uk ipipir sa ir tatasi. What do you want? There are spirits everywhere here in the city. Ghosts live inside of the people who remember them, just a little. Everyone has that spark, except for me. I have no one inside of me, except for the Guardian and the other. But some of these people, the ghosts inside them cause so much pain. <laughs> of course, silly. They're inside people. The Guardian can hear them, though, and so can I. The ones that hurt? The spirits have such sad stories. The people don't know, though. All they understand is that they feel bad, but they don't know why. When you feel bad for no reason, you might have touched one of them. The city is old, so old, and so many people have lived and died here. There are spirits everywhere. I guess I can understand why so many of them feel so bad all the time. But we shouldn't talk about this so much. Who knows how much we'll draw their attention. We should keep going. Is there anything else you want? This place is evil. I don't like it here. The people, they're hurting too. A black cloud hangs over this place. Please, don't leave me behind here. Not alone. Is there anything else you want? I... I... Oh! It's time you and I had a talk, mortal. You've been paying too much attention to this girl's problems and the Guardian's advice. We need more realism here. The girl is already dead. She's a walking corpse. She's nothing to anyone. What I want is the body. I need an anchor, and this little walking meat puppet can provide that. But Chaikar gives me trouble. He's in my way. He's weak, but the girl sides with him. To take control, I need your help, and I'm willing to offer servitude for it. You say that now, but when the time comes, we'll see how much power tempts you. And if you continue to refuse, I still have ways to get my revenge. <laughs>
Yes? I like to think that we can take time to talk about important things. That is not really necessary right now, although I do enjoy the attention. We have come so far together. Thank you for that. Don't go too far. I'd get lost in this city. I know it. Well, well. Is the Imperial City all you expected? It is quite a spectacle compared to the bulk of the Empire. The marvelous Dragonfly performed perfectly. Of course. Go, explore the city. I will stay here and watch over the marvelous dragonfly. I have some ideas for making her even better. Go, have fun. I know I will. I've given some thought to the strange device that I was inspired to construct. I'm not sure what purpose it has yet, but it appears to be working. I think. Ah, just a few tweaks. Hmm, tight fit. Not sure how that will affect things. Uh, what's it? Hmm. I don't remember seeing that before. Uh, uh, just get this last. There we go. It's ready. Now we can finally find out just what it does. After I name it, of course. Nothing works right until you name it. How about the confoundable minutia? What? No, impossible. I, I fixed it. I checked everything. It should work. Unless... unless... no, I did that. Oh, where'd the city go? Well, that was anticlimactic. A flash of light, but no resounding boom. What good is such a light if Earth doesn't meet sky? What? Oh my. It seems we have transported to a... a heaven. A strangely familiar one for some reason, but I don't recall ever moving to such a place before. Good idea. Something about this place makes me want to explore too. I am compelled to step this way. There are gears here that I remember. It's a marvel, a wonder of monumental proportions, a phenomenal piece of unbelievable craftsmanship. I haven't the slightest idea, but it must be important, wouldn't you think? I mean, just look at it. These machines, they are manipulators, fabricators. They bully energy into, into something. They can be activated, deactivated, on and off, off and on, you, you see? I... I can only come to one conclusion. Lord Lau's furnace. Legendary, mythical. And overrated in some respects, but if anyone else has a better origin for such machines as this, I'm not hearing it. Artificer to the celestial bureaucracy, he creates machines that themselves also create. Although I'd make them a little less delicate had I his resources. Still, 
He is an inspirational figure for inventors, and we are in his playhouse. You select the machines you want to activate, and then the tiger or the dragon button, like this. Don't worry. The individual machines are not activated. I think the switches must be thrown on at least two of the components before it will do well, whatever it does. You also have to select a fuel. It looks like there are a few pieces of cinnabar in the contraption, but it may accept others as well. Well, judging by the pile of ashes I found near the controls, if you do it wrong, it either creates a nice warm fire or burns the person standing here to a crisp. It looks like a powerful thing, so just guessing at the possible configurations will probably get you into trouble and waste the cinnabar in the machine. So, you might want to be careful how you go about it. Things like this usually have directions. Uh, no, recipe. No, that's not it. Um, a configuration. That's it. Very true. Perhaps you should give them a try. They didn't mean much before, but now we may have the tools to make something of them. the individual components, at least two of them. Place the fuel of your choice in the hopper, and then press either the tiger or the dragon button. Before you do all that, you should make sure you know what configuration you want. Otherwise, boom! <laughs> you never know what might happen. Well, given the rather fantastic nature of the furnace, I would bet that whoever has them doesn't really know what they are for. You found one previously in an unrelated endeavor. I'm afraid that is just the kind of continued uncertainty we will have to deal with. Keep your eyes open. All right, all right. Have a look around, or whatever it is you do. Come and find me when you want to go back.
a mo Turn on the individual components, at least two of them. Place the fuel of your choice in the hopper, and then press either the tiger or the dragon button. Before you do all that, you should make sure you... All
Um, turn on the individual components, at least... What an amazing machine! Now, if we can find more configurations, just imagine what we could do here. That same one? But why not try something different? It's up to you, of course. Very well. In the meantime, I will try to see if I can learn anything more about this interesting machine. I can always bring us back here later. on the lookout for the Scourge of the South. It is your duty as citizens of the Empire to report anyone who matches this description. Keep an eye out for a bare-chested wild man with hair covering his back and arms. Reports suggest he is well over seven feet tall and fully armed. This man is very dangerous. Do not try to apprehend the Scourge of the South but instead report what you've seen to the authorities immediately. scared of the Lotus Assassins, but I still wouldn't want to talk to one. The Scourge of the South has destroyed whole villages in the South. Out of sheer spite, the Scourge flooded ancient ruins, wantingly destroying our very own heritage. Where are those mercenaries? The Scourge Associate...
A group of river-faring businessmen have been attacked and forced to flee. Nobody is safe from this criminal. His own master died at his hands, and he had fellow students kidnapped and tortured just because they didn't agree with him. Good day, citizen. Some minor thing I can help you with? It's the Honorable Lotus Assassins, you see. They feel that those of us dedicated to the Imperial Army are nothing more than louts to be ordered about. Any member of the Army, even City Guard, is expected to defer any major disturbances to them. Makes me about as useful as a lamppost. What district are you looking for? The garden is just off the Golden Way, so you need to head there first. One of the guards in there can take you the rest of the way, if you need. The Golden Way is through a gate in the southeast corner of this district, just up a broad flight of steps that lead up from a courtyard. The garden is just off the Golden Way, so you need to head there first. One of the guards in there can take you the rest of the way, if you need. The Golden Way is through a gate in the southeast corner of this district, just up a broad flight of steps that lead up from a courtyard. To reach the necropolis, you need to go to the Golden Way first. Once there, you can ask another guard, if you're still lost. To reach the Golden Way, when I'm afraid not. I'm on duty, and it's imperative that I remain focused on what few tasks I'm still deemed capable of performing. A fellow guard once paused for idle chit-chat with a woman. She went to the Lotus Assassins with the story of his inattentiveness. Next thing you know, he's arrested for threatening the security of the Empire with his lax ways. I don't know what happened to him, but I don't want to share his fate. Be about your business and stay out of trouble. Pleasure to be of service. If there are ghosts, why haven't I seen one? All this talk about spirits is just nonsense. Onu you wear napayer wo onu you sayer ikupa. I love shopping in the city. They have everything here. I hope my daughter will grow to be as beautiful as the princess, though perhaps less unruly. Those Lotus Assassins make me nervous. They just look so... unnatural. Excuse me, out of my way. I've got to get these buns to the Scholar's Garden. Quick, quick, now move. I'm very sorry. Please accept my heartfelt apologies. My husband has the manners of a strutting cock sometimes. Hmm, I seem to recall you rather enjoyed my, uh, strutting at one time, old woman. 
Just now, you'll offend the gods of decency. This poor traveler's likely to think that the Imperial City is full of indecent folk and offensive talk. Now then, after all the trouble we've caused you, is there anything we can help you with? We've got fresh buns. Just made them myself. Did you hear that, Lena? I think we were just told to keep it short. Perhaps I'll keep it short and say goodbye. Now, now, Junda. It's nothing worse than you've already said yourself. Not everyone is as tolerant of your ramblings as I am. Go on, then. Ask your questions and we'll try to answer them as quickly as possible. We're members of the local traveling circus. I'm a fire eater and Lena is a juggler. We just sell buns on the side to make a little extra silver. Junda, could you try to be civil just this once? This buffoon of a man is Junda, and I am Lena, his wife, as he is fond of reminding me. We sell buns here in the city. Well, I bake and he sells. If he hasn't bought a bun for me, I likely don't know him. Come to think of it, if he hasn't bought a bun for me, I don't want to know him. Junda, you withered old coconut! What's your problem? There's more to life than selling these buns, you know. I'm sorry to say I haven't heard of your friend either, and I'm not sure what you mean by master. Try the Scholar's Garden. The people there might know your friend. There is much to tell about the city, but we do need to sell the buns while they're fresh. Perhaps you could be more specific? Well, this district is called the Market District. This is where most of the buying and selling happens. Most of the lower classes live and work here. And die here too. Not like those nobles and wealthy merchants over in the Golden Way or in the Scholar's Garden. Born into a life of luxury. Huh. Must be nice. Yes, dear. Life has been cruel, hasn't it? Good work, a wonderful family, and many friends. Poor Junda. Next you'll blame the nobles for your backaches, too. Why don't you go and check out the Imperial Arena? It's a prosperous place to sell buns, especially before a big fight. You and those fights. I can't stand watching them. I prefer to take walks by the wall, or just gaze at the magnificent palace. It's busy, but it's a good place to get information and meet people. Best wine in the Empire, too. How would you know, you lazy lout? You've never been outside the city in your life. Best in the Empire. Ha! Probably the only wine you've ever had. The wall is magnificent. It just keeps growing. Though I pity the criminals who are forced to work there. Very few ever return. The palace is truly one of our greatest treasures. The heavens have indeed blessed our empire greatly to give us such a beautiful edifice. Ah, it's unnatural, I say. Just floating up in the air. Emperor or no, it's not right to live in a place that just floats like that. What's to tell? Fighters fight, spectators watch, gamblers gamble. It's just like any other arena, except the level of competition is very high here. I'd talk to Quee the promoter if you really want to know more about the arena. He talks more than you do, but at least he buys my buns. Death's Hand. Now there's a name you don't hear often. 
I'm just a simple bun seller, but even I know enough to be careful who I utter that name around. For once we agree, husband. Death's hand is a walking nightmare. It is said that if you see him coming, then it's already too late. But enough of wives' tales. Just be careful who you mention that name to, unless you wish to draw bad attention to yourself. Go then. I have buns to sell, and it doesn't look like you're buying. Don't mind him. He just takes a while to get used to. Much like an ache in the bones if it lasts long enough. Eventually, you learn to ignore it. Good day to you. Lost, citizen? Be about your... I love playing in the city. There's so many places to see. My uncle saw a ghost while traveling in the south. I don't think I'll be traveling that way anytime soon. If you think you've seen this person, you must report it to the authorities at once. It is... Where are those mercenaries? Time to bloody my axes! Where are... Greetings, citizen. Imperial Captain Sen at your service. Are you one of the mercenaries come to help me track down some criminal scum? Come now, you have the look of a warrior about you, and there's nothing common about that. Admittedly, you don't resemble the ones described to me, but they're several days late. No doubt they'll blame it on the foolish ghost stories. I need help tracking down a pair of criminals. Are you interested in a little... These two scoundrels have eluded my best efforts, and so I'm turning to bounty hunters. It's harder to run when your pursuers are not in a uniform. It's a shame, but the army gave up trying to arrest me years ago. Too many casualties. Guess I should have sent home more missing limbs than missing heads. I'm searching for an arsonist and a notorious confidence man. Find and eliminate either one, and there's a standard bounty in it for you. A wise decision. The two criminals are Fading Moon and Creative Yukong. Fading Moon is an arsonist who was last spotted heading for the necropolis. Creative Yukon has virtually disappeared, though we may be able to learn something from Lady Rento, the wife of the man Yukon bilked. She's in the Imperial Arena. Fading Moon is an arsonist. Her first fires were in the poor quarters, but her last one spread to the Market District Gate. Last we heard, she'd escaped to the Necropolis. The gates between here and the poorer districts will be closed for some time while repairs are underway. There's nothing particular about the scene of the crime, just ash. Well, as I said, she confined them to the poor districts. 
She would have been impossible to catch in that rat's nest. More frankly, there isn't enough money to make it worth my effort. Yukong fleeced some silver from Lord Rento, a powerful man in the Ministry of Harmony. Yukong is a master of disguise, and he has hidden himself somewhere in the city. Lord Rento is away on court business, but his wife informed me that she'd be in the heart of the Empire in the Imperial Arena if we needed her. You could start there. She knows the details of the theft better than I. Lord Rento was reluctant to discuss them. Yukong could be anywhere or anyone, and Lady Rento is the only lead we have. Right you are. Remember to keep an eye out for anyone suspicious. This gateway isn't as busy as it used to Have you heard about this scourge of the South? Sounds like the Lotus Assassins are on edge. The Imperial City is a vast place, my friend. Be sure you don't get lost. Those Lotus Assassins make me nervous. They just look so... unnatural. Those Lotus Assassins make me nervous. I'm not worried about ghosts. If they're... Lost, citizen? My uncle saw a ghost while traveling in the south. I don't think I'll be traveling that way anytime soon. My uncle saw a ghost while traveling. I wonder if the princess used to play in the streets when she was little. I don't care even if there are ghosts. The emperor is stronger than all the ghosts put together. Do you really think we'll find second brother here in the city? Why ask me? I don't even want to be here. Second brother probably decided he didn't want to listen to Master Radiant anymore, and left to get some peace. Never! Second brother is devoted to Master Radiant. If anything, I suspect Master Smiling Hawk had something to do with his disappearance. What? You dare accuse Master Smiling Hawk? Quiet, you worms. You're here to look for second brother, not bicker like school children. Now get moving! I am honored that you have chosen me. Is... is this a school? It is so much bigger than what we had in Two Rivers. You're a fool if you believe what Master Smiling Hawk teaches. Brute force is not always the best way to win a battle. Oh, and Master Radiant's ways are better? I don't think so. Brute force is the only way to get what you want, and I can prove it. How? I'll show you. Hey, you! What do you think you're doing here? Get out of here, or we'll throw you out! Ha! <laughs> you sound like my weakling friend over here. Oh, please let me pass? No. Now, how about you just turn yourself around before you get hurt? Boys, we may be young, but we've trained all our lives. Come on, let's teach our visitors some respect. Thousand cops up! 
Peace, third brother. That is no way to treat a guest. Enough. Leave us, third brother, before you disgrace the school and yourself, and take these novices with you. Losa ir son sikun wan kut afu ka wuk tati yir. Wo uf na ak na ir yakowa krui ni rui kupar fita. I'm very sorry about that. We are not accustomed to having visitors. My name is First Brother Kai. Welcome to the Black Leopard School. No, nothing more than usual. Normally this kind of thing would never happen. Fortunately, you seemed more than capable of handling the situation. In all my years, I've never seen anyone but a master with skills like yours. I would not normally ask, but would you be interested in joining our school? It would be an honor to have someone of your skill. Well, it's obvious that you can fight, and I assume you want to improve like all fighters do. Even someone of your skill could find a challenge or two here. The school provides a safe place to practice against different opponents with different styles. You will no doubt catch the eye of one of the masters. They know unique styles and would likely teach you, if you impress them. Excellent. I must speak with the masters on your behalf. They are the final judge of such matters. Wait here.
Good news. Master Radiant agreed to let you join. A rare honor indeed. In fact, he would like to meet with you once you have proven yourself. First, however, Master Radiant wants to ensure that your fight against the novices was not just luck. You must now defeat each of the brothers here at the school. Good. A positive attitude will win you many fights before you even begin. You have proven you can defeat our novices. Now you must prove yourself against the brothers. The brothers have trained long and are second only in skill to the masters. Sixth brother is the least skilled, so you will start with him. Work your way to third brother. If you succeed against him, you will then challenge me. Second brother is not here. For now, you must face only third brother and myself, after you've defeated the other brothers. I must be honest with you. I believe Master Radian has a plan in allowing you to join us. As you may have heard, there are two masters at this school. Master Radiant and I have tried for some time to temper Master Smiling Hawk's ways. He is cunning and ruthless and has little regard for students. Normally I wouldn't speak openly about such things, but you are new and your skill will draw his attention. Be careful. Master Smiling Hawk is a dangerous man. It is complicated. If you prove yourself, I'm sure that Master Radiant will be more than happy to explain it to you. For now, be careful and focus on defeating the brothers. Start with Sixth Brother and ask him to fight with you. I'm sure he'll be eager. Once you've defeated all the brothers, come and see me. Good luck. Swine, look what you've done! Do you think I have nothing better to do than to clean up after you pigs all day long? Yes, mistress. I, I mean, no, mistress. Get out! Get out of here before I break your skull open, you little rat! This isn't a public restaurant. We only serve the students here. You'll have to go back to the city if you're hungry. Questions about what? Go ask your teacher if you have questions. You're the student, you tell me. What is there to tell? The boys come and learn to fight and they think that's all there is to the world. Learning and fighting. They are very good at both, but put any one of them in a room with a lady and they just wither away. What's the point in teaching a man to learn and fight if he can't even relate to the people he's supposed to protect? Masters? Ha! I'm the only master of this school. Those other two hide in their rooms all day long doing who knows what. How can you be master of anything when you never participate? It's unnatural. Of course, it wasn't always that way, or at least that's what I've heard. There was only one master once. Makes sense to me. Too many cooks in the kitchen, as I always say. Me? Is this some ploy to get an extra serving of fish in your soup tonight? It won't work, you know. But, since you ask. I am the headmistress here at the school. I organize everything that these witless fighters forget to do. 
paperwork, laundry, cooking, you name it. It's a thankless job. Never so much as a smile or a wave as I labor over my work. If it wasn't for me, this place would fall apart. Good. I have work to do. We may be novices, but we're still skilled. Your lucky third brother stopped that fight when he did. I don't really feel like talking right now. You certainly taught us a thing or two about fighting. I'm just glad you didn't hurt us too badly. It was foolish of us to challenge you earlier. I apologize for my impudence. You're too slow! Hello, my name is Fourth Brother Yu, and you must be the new prodigy. First Brother told us to watch out for you. He said that you're very talented. Of course, until you've defeated Fifth Brother, I'll just have to take his word for it. Is there something else I can do for you in the meantime? Well, the school is the best of its kind in all the Empire. I consider myself very fortunate to be a student here. That's not to say that we don't have our problems. Having two masters is a bit unusual, and it seems to slow the progress of the school. Master Radiant is a great leader, but he never comes out of his room anymore. Master Smiling Hawk, on the other hand, well, I shouldn't say anything about that. I've been trying to find that out myself. I even sent a few of the students into the city to see if they could discover the truth. Master Smiling Hawk was the last to speak with Second Brother, though I still don't know what they discussed. It's no secret that they disliked each other. Third Brother told me that Master Smiling Hawk sent Second Brother into the city on an errand, but nobody saw him leave the school. I fear Second Brother has run into trouble. And I suspect Master Smiling Hawk is behind it all. As you wish. You must be the new student. I'm fifth brother Shang Jin. There's been quite a stir regarding your entry into the school. Most unorthodox. It would seem Master Radiant is up to his tricks again. Regardless, I can't fight you until you've defeated Sixth Brother. Is there something else I can do for you? The Black Leopard School is the most respected school in all the Empire. But we are losing that respect. The school has strong leadership, but we currently suffer from having too many leaders. Two masters is one too many. I don't mind Master Radiant, but he is too detached and too passive. Master Smiling Hawk could regain our respect, if Master Radiant would let him. I have no idea, though he was very vocal in condemning Master Smiling Hawk. Perhaps he grew tired of all the bickering here and decided to leave. I know if I was a follower of Master Radiant, I would likely get very bored, very quickly. Maybe he just decided to go to a new school, somewhere more peaceful. Of course, I'll be glad to spar with you once you've defeated Sixth Brother. You still haven't defeated any of the brothers yet. Is there something I can help you with in the meantime? Simply speak to them and request a match. The brothers are always eager to test their skills, especially with a new opponent. I can't get into the details of how that came about. However, I can tell you that it was not intended to be that way. 
A school should only have one master. The rivalry between our masters is hurting the school and the students. Of course, neither master wishes to step down. It is a problem that needs to be solved if this school is going to survive. Officially, I follow both. I am first brother, and it is my duty to assist both masters in any way I can. That being said, I was taught by Master Radiant, and I go to him for advice or learning in a given area. Master Smiling Hawk is not interested in teaching the students or the brothers. He seeks only to improve his own abilities. It's named after Master Black Leopard, the school's first true master. He founded the school in a remote region of the Empire hundreds of years ago. The school grew slowly but steadily under Master Black Leopard's tutelage, but it wasn't until he was quite old that the school became as popular as it is today. Emperor Zhu Fu, having trained at the school as a youth, moved the school to the Imperial City. Since then, the school has become the very best in the Empire. All we really know is that second brother is missing. Master Smiling Hawk sent him on an errand, but no one has seen him since. It is unlike second brother to be gone this long without contacting us. I suspect that something has happened to him. We have students looking for him now. I hope we find him soon. He is a good man and an excellent brother. Very little, I'm afraid. The school enjoys a degree of privacy from the outside world. It allows us to focus on our training, but it also isolates us. I haven't been beyond these walls in almost five years. There is really nothing for me in the world beyond. My focus is the school and its students. Very good. Your next opponent is sixth brother Gao Shan. Once you've defeated all the brothers, come and see me. Good luck. 